There is surprising new evidence about what is fueling the gender gap and keeping women from top jobs and the highest earnings. The issue is explored in one of the most emailed articles on the New York Times website. Women did everything right and then work got greedy. That is a reference to how a lot of employers now demand long, inflexible hours and round-the-clock availability. CBS News contributor Jody Cantor is an investigative reporter for The New York Times, whose work prompted the rise of the Me Too movement. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you. Okay, so let's define for everybody what is greedy work. Greedy work is a new way of thinking about a very familiar problem, which is how do we have all of these women going to law school, all of these women going to business school, it's practically 50-50 in those arenas. And then you look a few years later, you see very few female CEOs, very few women controlling capital, really being the decision makers. What's happening? Is it bias? Is it sexism? This brilliant article by my colleague Claire Kane Miller says, no, there's this other explanation, which is that work hours are out of control. If you really want to be a super achiever, you have to devote yourself entirely to the workplace. You have to start your week on a Sunday afternoon or a Sunday evening. And because people are marrying essentially their twins, one person with an MBA marries somebody else with an MBA, it's like it only makes sense for one of those two people to become try to become the super achiever, mm -hmm. and it usually ends up being a man. So it's a little bit of a stomach dropping article because it says, wow, you know, women yeah. have done everything right. Yeah. And then this other thing came along, the explosion of hours in the world of work, and it's eroding all of these educational gains. So let's circle the usually becomes the man who's the one who works the 80 hours. Why? Well, that is a great question, and that's kind of the biological drift that nobody can get away from. You know, by the time you have the babies, you take the maternity leave. You know, is it tradition? Is it in our heads? Et cetera, et cetera. And there are some exceptions to that. We all know couples where it's women who have taken the lead and the man has hung back more. But what it's showing us is that there's this thing that we all feel, and that's felt at all income levels, right, not just the elite one, mm -hmm. which is that work demands more of us than ever yeah. and that is is that has that has a kind of obliterating power over other things we're trying to do and adjust but in there was something that really surprised me in this article it says that working mothers today spend yeah. as much time with their yeah. children as stay-at-home mothers did in the 70s yeah parenting has become more demanding and it's yeah. almost become right. it, many people treat it you know sort of like a job I thought another one of the great lines in this article was talking about this kind of class of women it was saying these women don't stay at home because their husbands are rich. Their husbands are rich because they stay at home. Essentially, they're the hidden ingredient that lets their husband lets their husbands work all these crazy hours. So, what's the what are some of the proposed solutions? Well, there are proposed solutions, but this is where it's really hard because we all have the disease of being unable to draw back from more work. And so, what it would really take, on the one hand, there's a lot of evidence saying that you know, beyond a certain point, working excessively hard actually doesn't get you anywhere. We all know it. It's logical, right, that beyond a certain point, we're not actually accomplishing that much more. But the effort it takes, either on the part of individual or businesses, to really draw back and establish limits, it's very hard to do. So yeah. workers have to demand it, in effect, but who's going to have the courage to demand it? Or workplaces are going to have to support it. And say there are workplaces who have said, for example, no emails after 6 p.m. unless it's really an emergency. Not at this company. <laughs> <laughs> Not at mine either. It's very hard at news organizations. <laughs> All right, Jody, always good to see you. Thank you so much. Jody Cantor, thanks.